I had been around the school a few times, so from the outside it looked great, so I thought, what can be wrong with this school? So Ken and Juanita were kind enough to give me a tour of the school, and you know, when you go on the inside, you're going to see some of the things that you're not going to see from the outside, so I appreciate that, and I can relate to, you know, the special needs. My mom was with Ann Carlson for a long time, so, uh, you know, I, I understand the special needs things that you're going through. But one of the things that I'm hoping people can help me with tonight is I can't get over this financial hump, you know, this $24 million. Um, when you say $24 million for 20 years, we know that's not true. We know it's going to be around, what, $30, maybe $40 million by the time it's paid off? Correct. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the interest on the loan. Yeah. yeah. We're so gonna be I think that's somewhere about $9, nine million, somewhere in there. So we're going to be around 30, 35 million dollars for the school, and you guys already have what a million, two million dollars in debt. Um, 1.4. Okay. And the water plant. When I moved here, they were building a water plant. I don't know if that's paid off yet. Maybe they still owe a million dollars on the water plant. You know, for our taxes. That would be yeah, the city, but not. Yeah, the, it's not. still it's still tax money, right? Correct. The street project. That was. I think they still owe maybe $3 million on our street project. That's not paid off yet, is it? Anybody know that? I so, believe it isn't. Okay, so we got $3 million worth of debt there. Uh, I work for the county. If any of you guys are paying attention, the county's talking about borrowing a half a million dollars to pay off the shop. So there's more that's going to, you know, that's tax money. It's got to be paid for by tax money. Uh, this west side development. You know, I don't know how much money's been stuck into that West Side development, but it's all it's all tax money. In fact, I just saw in the paper a couple bought a house out there, and I'm assuming they paid, you know, three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand for that house. So I'm gonna assume their property taxes are maybe four thousand dollars. Well, if you take four thousand dollars and you add that over to a thirty year mortgage, those that young couple's got hundred and twenty thousand dollars in property taxes over the next 30 years. Now you add this school tax onto that, that young couple is facing $150,000 in property tax alone you know, for a new house in Carrington. Uh, Shopco, how many people know that your tax money is paying for Shopco? We're paying $25,000 a year for the next six years of our tax money to have Shopco here. And the JDA tax, you know, Carrington has a economic development tax. That's, I think, 2% a year. So that generates $400,000 a year, but it's still a tax onto the, you know, people of Carrington. Um, I'm guessing the city probably has debt that we don't know about, or I don't know. I'm guessing they probably still got a million dollars in debt elsewhere. I don't know. Anybody know that figure? I'm guessing the county's probably still got some debt that they haven't paid off. Um, and the city just raised our taxes by $60 per 100000 So, and by the year 2018, if I read the paper right, they're going to do a complete assessment, yeah, you know, on yeah. everybody. That's just not yeah. city, it's, it's countywide. Yeah. And the other thing I found out is our town is currently ranked in the top 15% of taxes. You know, if you look on the website, you're going to see that out of all the cities in North Dakota, if I read this right, we're in the top 15% of the tax bracket. And if you add this tax onto that, I'm guessing it's going to put us up in the top 5% of cities in North Dakota for taxes. So I can't... Um, you know, I, I, I'm having a hard time justifying this because I think, you know, you know, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA, but when you add all this debt, you know, if Carrington's got 40 or $50 million in debt, the only way that's going to be cleared is if you keep on raising property taxes. Am I wrong or am I right? You know, if you just keep on raising property taxes year after year, the farming economy goes down and, um, when I worked here, I worked at the pasta plant. Great place to work. But that plant has been here for 20, 25 years. You know, it's carrying part of this school district. So if somebody can go to the CEO of the 
pasta plant and say we're going to be here for another 20 years, fine, but there's no guarantees of that. So those are my concerns, and I hope somebody in here can say, yeah, don't worry about $50 million in debt. We'll pay it off. Well, that, I'm, I'm not going to repeat your question. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's my concern, you know. Yes. I, I, I don't want to turn my well, back there, on special needs. I think no. uh, you've got to address that problem. I really do. But you've got to look at it from a financial standpoint, too. Okay, my three children went through this school. They're all grown up and gone. They're raising their family someplace else. So I don't have any direct dog in the fight here. But I want a good uh, community, and part of a strong community is a good school system. And so we got to decide what are our priorities, yeah. you know? and. There are places in the world where they don't have any tax, if you can go there and try it and see why you like it, but I don't think you'd like it very well. You'll come back here. I, I, I don't like to pay more taxes either, but like I get to say, you've got to decide what your priorities are. Now this says $100,000 home. Okay, that's $310. Well now, if my wife and I went to Barbara for the weekend and stayed in a hotel for a couple of nights and ate in restaurants and fill, uh, burn up a tank of gas, we'd burn up a lot more money than that. And so what are your priorities? And you know, are we are we flat broke and we can't afford to do this? I know it'd be nice if we didn't have to pay for it. But if you want nice things, you have to pay for them. I'm glad we have that water plant. I'm glad I have that nice paved street in front of my house, and I'm sure glad when that snow plow goes by there in the morning. They go by there before I get up in the morning, and then when I get up I can I can back out of my driveway and go so But it all costs money, you know? It all costs money. What are our priorities? I think the cool is number one priority. Like I say, my kids are gone, but I'm a farmer. I can't leave Carrington because I can't take my farm with me. So I'm stuck here. And I'm on the board of a large co-op here in town. If we want to hire a new manager or a co-op or an agronomy manager or something, they're probably going to be somebody with some children and they're going to look at here and say, do I want to live in Carrington, North Dakota or not? You know? And one of the things they're going to look at is the school system. So what, what do we want? You know? And I know that I, I, I'm pretty, I know, I think I know all the people that are on the school board that look at this. They pay taxes too. And they looked at this and decided this was worthwhile. I, I have to admit, I haven't followed it real close. This is my first exposure to it. But I, so, but I, I kind of trust them because they're taxpayers too. And so they're not going to go and just spend money wild, wildly away, uh, you know, just throw it away. Uh, this is an early projection by Myron Knudsen. He does public financing. He does um, selling of bonds for school districts. Our school district has worked with him before. Other school districts worked with him and his company. Um, this was an early projection of a $100,000 home with approximately additional cost of $320 um, per acre. It was um, crop land, silver land, $3 per acre. Um, Boston County average was about $2.56 per acre. And then for um, non-crop land, about $0.53 cents per acre. <coughs> You know, but the problem that we're looking at in one way is that these houses around here have not been assessed for a while. And right now, a $30,000 assessed house, when it's reassessed, is going to end up being considerably more. So, you know, for my husband and I, it may not be a big issue, but for our elderly, for our fixed income people, for our disability people, that is going to be an absolute shocker to them. I don't know. I think we have to worry not only so much about those who can afford it, but those who can't afford this. We'd all love to have this beautiful state-of-the-art facility for our children. But we learn from our parents, our grandparents, we give our children what we can afford. And uh, right now, with commodities the way they are, with everything so unstable, it's a, it's, it, I, I feel sorry for the elderly for the people on fixed incomes in this community. That's what I'm, my concern is. Yeah. So what happens if we all vote for this to go for the 23.5 million? And what if all the bids come in for the construction of it and it's whatever, 10, 10 million more or well, whatever? No, but correct. In, in, the, in your vote, you approve 23.5. That's 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 how much we can tax for it for 20 years. So the board would make some decisions, then what are they going to eliminate? What are they going to, because we've been approved 23.5, that's all they can bond for. My question was though, if the property valuation on agricultural land decreases, and that's the majority of our assessed debt, the residential homeowner will have to pick up the slack. 
And also, if I'm correct on the assumption that if the state does not contribute at the equal percentage they are now, will the homeowner have to raise and pick up that deficit also? Am I correct? The, if the state does not contribute their same portion that they're currently doing, the state the state picks up the the foundation aid payment. They did not pick up any portion of, of a building project. That all goes to, to a local assessment. Okay. Your 2% interest that on your website, that's only based on the first 10 years. Correct. What about the following 10? Yes, and, and we talked about that. So the question was the, the um, loan is only guaranteed for the first 10 years. And and after that, either we would have to go, the, the state is buying down that difference in that loan. So the, we would have to go in and we could take that the remaining 10 years and go out and purchase bonds or sell bonds on that. So that, that would change. What's the cost of, uh, of achieving the bond? What's, okay, the, so what's the net cost of uh, obtaining bond offering? In other words, you're, you're, you're offering a bond for $15 million. Whoever's putting the bond offering together is not going to do it for free. What's the cost of that? The cost of... Mm, don't have that right now, but I can get that for you. Back. I can ask them what they're going to charge us for that. Question. Back to the point that Carter brought up. The 23 pie for the square footage you're getting really seems excessive. Farms County North, their new school they built and opened up in 2013. They have two gymnasiums. One's a large one, one's a small one, and they have the preschool all the way through 12th grade in there, and they built that for 14 million. But I, read, I read this morning in the, the this forum that Moorhead built a new school, or is contemplating building a new school, 111,000 square feet. And the projected cost is 25.6 million. I'm just wondering if we're getting ripped off here. Well, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, you know. See, I got a question on your state school levy reduction up there. Now, the state's been awful generous about right up to that top dollar amount, that six fifty five ninety five. Yes. Now they've been awful generous of kicking in that money because of high revenue from oil fields, uh, the income tax from the state. Now most likely they're going to quit kicking in that kind of money and it's still going to increase our taxes a lot more along with the school. There's always that possibility. Yes. So. I have a question. The, the, yeah. the $23.5 million, is there any part of that money that is going to go to doing something with the current property over there? No. So, so there, are you planning, is it planning to demolish it? Okay. And so haul question, it all the way? So Ted's question is, are the $23.5 million, is, is any money in that project to, to demolish that, that building? And the answer is no. So have you, have you gotten any estimates demolished? on it? No, we haven't put out the bid or, or requested any bid or any proposals to, to demolish that building. No. Is that is that the perp is that what you want to do? Demolish it? Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, if, if somebody in the room would like to purchase it, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the only option. No, so the options are is one yes to try to sell it, and if that's possible, yes. But if 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 we can't sell it, we're not going to let the building sit and deteriorate. In the middle of this. Because that would be good for our city every day. How much was so, spent? How much was spent in the design getting up to this point? Right um, we paid YHR, the architect, six thousand oh, dollars. Okay, and what was what you pay for the other firm? For FJJ for for uh, twenty five thousand. And what was there? And, and and who came up with the actual drawing? The architecture firm. The architecture firm. Yeah. And then what did you? What was the twenty-five thousand architecture firm that did those drawings in there? Seemed like that would be a little bit more expensive than uh, a little bit more more work than. What exactly was the scope of of uh, the twenty-five thousand? What was that paid for? The FJJ came in and did facility planning for us. You see the the red, the green, the yellow. They did all those facility planning. They yeah. met with the with our stakeholders. They held those meetings and, and yeah. conducted that. But you know, it's kind of interesting because it seems to me that they're and that's their job is to find find issues that that need to be remediated. But which is more to me like uh, if the only tool you ever had was a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. So uh, in other words, I would assume that, that what they would do is they would find things that would be fault, and, and naturally there was things to find fault in that building as well as this building. 
the way it looks to me, you're going to be building this to where the current bus barn shop is. So we are demolishing that too. What are we doing there? Here, what we're going to do is that building's going to get moved here. So we're not going to demolish it, we're just going to move it. Is that already figured in? That's that's part of the 23.5. Yes. So in the 23.5 million, how much is that money being used for any renovation in this facility that we're in right now? In the middle school, high school? Is it the 23.5 all in the new construction? Yes, but you know there there will be will be building right up to to, to get technical with the question. No, there is no, not going to be any any renovation to to this high school, but we will be building right up next to it. So, um, you know, you know they'll have to join the building. Okay. So there'll be some. So some everything that's in it. here, once you attach all of that to this, everything that's in here is to code. So that. Two years or three years down the road, you guys ain't going to come back and say, "Well, now that we tied it all together, now we got to bring this whole facility up to code." What percentage of that seventy plus thousand square feet is for actual classroom academic use? Less than. Well, this is all academic. Um, yeah, I mean, like excluding the gymnasium and. The majority of this is, is all academic. Um, you could, you know, we have Mr. Hopel in here. I think he teaches by ed, and so he'd be in this facility all day. Um, this facility would be auditorium. That wouldn't be, that would be more, you know, we could use that for different programs during school day too. But the majority of the project is, is academic. Uh, the one thing that we haven't never really scale back on is, is when we looked at our elementary school that was our number one priority we've never really done any reduction to to the programming of of our elementary school that was our number one priority and so we've never cut back on that we've cut back on other areas of parking lots and and remodels of our high school facilities a little bit but we wanted to make sure that that you know our number one goal is to, to create an elementary school for the next eight years yeah, Brian, under uh, Article, uh, I think it's 8, Section, Subsection 2 of the state uh, constitution, isn't it required that if a, uh, if, uh, if a school is dilapidated or, or, as you say, substandard like this uh, elementary school, doesn't the state have a constitutional, uh, a constitutional obligation to, to, to fund fixing that school up? Um, the state has a... Uh, obligation to educate kids. Yeah, part of education. You, yeah. you wouldn't assume that education would mean the child would be in a place where there would be asbestos, as an example, or, but, or, or as an example, mold, or as an example, a, a you're saying that that school over there is not ADA compliant? Is that what you're saying? Not to all areas, no. So it's not a, so if a kid comes in there and he's, he's a special needs kid and he's in a wheelchair, he can't access uh, the needed classrooms, is that what you're saying? There are some, some areas they wouldn't be able to get to, yes. Don't we have to be ADA compliant? Um, we're, you know, I think currently we are in some areas of that elementary school, but not to all areas. Oh, go ahead. If you're a landowner, but you do not live here, mm -hmm. they don't get a vote? Kim? They do not get a vote. You have to be voting your residents. So where your residence is, where you actually live, is where you vote. We called on that just to make sure. <clears throat> so if you own land here, but you do not live here, and you rent your land out or whatever, you do not get to vote here. I mean, you don't get to vote, period. Well, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for coming. Thank if you, you want, if you want, Mrs. Short and um, any Albrecht, our elementary custodian, they'll be at the elementary school. They'll give a tour with all for different school days. If you have a question, you can stop by my office, give me a call. I'll talk to you. Thanks for coming.